Now to present our next award, would you please welcome Claire Byrne. Where do I go? <laughs> I'll show you now. How are you? You're great. great. So Thank beautiful. you. Thank you very much, Gronia, and good evening, everyone. On January the 24th, 2012, Roisin Malloy, accompanied by her husband, Mark, rushed to the Midland Regional Hospital in Port Leash as they expected the arrival of their fifth child. Baby Mark got into difficulty during labour and tragically only lived for a brief time. His time on this earth, however, was a game changer. Early on, we always said we wanted to have a big family. Then Mark was on the way. We always said we'd probably stop at five, and we did stop at five. You know, I could just see our future with him. He was with the rest of It was just, you know, the very same as when I had the other boys. The very same. It's just that lovely, ah, <gasps> another one. Mark was going to a boy, and, and like that, I was just cloud nine. And I, can, I saw them working on him, you know, so, and I didn't have any concerns. Then, after about 10 minutes, the consultant said, oh, it doesn't sound good over there. And I was like, oh. And then I have no memory then for another 10 minutes until Mark said, oh, Jesus, we're not getting him. And that moment where you, where you could see people sort of, the, 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 the mayhem that was going on sort of stopped and, and the room went quiet. And that was, that was it at that moment. I knew we weren't getting him. I decided to accompany Mark to his autopsy in Tullamore the next day because I wanted to speak to the pathologist. He essentially said to me, your baby died of acute anoxia, basically a, a lack of oxygen during birth. We just knew that there was something wrong. We had been told it was 10 years since anything like this happened. But then we started getting calls from parents. We were hearing from people 2008, 2009. We knew Mark was 2012. And people were saying there are others. So it just didn't add up for us. We wanted to know what happened to Mark. We wanted it put right, and we absolutely wanted to make sure that if there were unnecessary deaths and injuries occurring, that, that somebody was going to intervene and, and, and stop it as far, in so far as possible. We both were, but I was very, you know, driven. From that point then, we started moving higher up the HSE to voice our concerns. Those at, in a position to give us answers weren't doing it. So it's like, oh, then if you're not going to give us then we'll go to the next level. And what we found is that each level wasn't acting, doing what they were supposed to do. That's ultimately what drove us to speak to the media in the end. In January 2014, Primetime's Fatal Failures programme investigated the deaths of babies at the Midlands Regional Hospital. Roisin and Mark have worked tirelessly for change. You know, for any of these families, there's unfortunately no turning back. But now, as a result of, of their bravery and telling their stories, there are new bereavement standards in place. There's also a new maternity strategy in place for the first time in Ireland. There were several investigations after the Fatal Failures Programme into the practices at Port Leash Hospital. And for tens of families there who had also experienced the loss of babies or suffered injuries, they also had their cases reviewed. And so for the first time, they also got answers. It literally was the drive of ordinary people to say, this has to stop, and the drive of a lot of other parents to say, this has to stop. That's what brought about the change, because children were dying, and that, that's the sad thing, is that the death you'd imagine of our son would be enough to change things. But in reality, that wasn't. Getting a People of the Year award, it's bittersweet for us. Uh, ultimately, there's no happy ending to this for us, you know, no matter What's achieved in Mark's name, we're not getting him back at the end of the day. Um, sorry, that's upsetting to think even like that, but by the same token, um, there's a poem that Roisin loves um, by Emily Dickinson, and she says, if I can stop one heart from breaking, I will not have lived in vain. And when you think of, excuse me again, sorry. When you think of Mark, and you think of all the hearts he stopped from breaking now and into the future, We've got to be so proud of. Of their motivating campaign, bravery and determination of spirit, we honour Mark and Roisin Malloy with a 2016 People of the Year Award.
Yeah, you as well. There you go. Mark, excellent. Thank you. It's crying. Roshi, thank you. I'm all done. We're all very emotional, even just having you up here on the stage with us. And I think everybody would have understood when the awful tragedy that befell your family happened. If you withdrew into your own world just to cope with what you yourselves were going through, we would all have understood. But you were so determined from the start that nobody else would have to endure what you did. Absolutely. I mean, apart from everything, Ronnie, apart from wanting to know why your son died, ultimately, every parent wants to know if your child falls in school, you want to know what happened. Mm. So we wanted to know why Mark died. But there was a huge burden of responsibility as well. You were hearing of it happening again and again and again. And you know, the thought that people who are employed by the state to, um, you know, investigate these items and make sure they don't happen again, just weren't doing it. And we simply couldn't accept that. Yeah, there's definitely a, there's a burden of responsibility, not only to get answers for ourselves and our family, as to what happened to Mark. And he was just gorgeous, he was like a beauty. But also that burden of responsibility to know that his life mattered enough to stop his death happening again to another family. He mattered enough to stop it happening again and again. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Everybody who has worked with Mark and Roisin on the journey to tonight has commented on what an amazing couple you are because when awful things happen to people like this, sometimes it can unite you, but sometimes it can break you. But everybody has commented on just what a wonderful, loving couple you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we're, we've been out your childhood sweethearts, I suppose we grew up together, really. And we're both so family driven. I mean, our family means absolutely everything to us. Yeah, and, and again, I, you know, it, it was just this common drive to know what happened to our child. You, you know, we're so protective of the lads. And we, you know, we knew we never could shout for Mark at the side of a football pitch or rugby pitch. So we said, we're certainly going to shout for him now. And I suppose it was a common drive. Thankfully, both of us wanted the same thing. We both wanted to know, and that just drove us on. It was fantastic. Okay, well, Aidan is with Roisin's brother, Eric, and your two eldest boys as well, Gavin and Adam. Aidan. That's right, Brian. Yeah, this is Eric, and we've Gavin and Adam here. Looking sharp, lads. Uh, this is a huge night for your family. How do you feel to be here? Oh, it's very good, yeah. Delighted to be here. Mm -hmm. And mum and dad have worked so hard for this. Yeah, uh, well, the family's been through a lot, like, uh, man, I spent a lot of time, like, going through meetings and stuff, but, like, it was never enough time to let me do stop doing my homework and stuff, so... Uh. <laughs> I was going to say, if they're away, were you getting up to mischief, Adam? Uh, no, not no really. No comment? No. No? <laughs> we'll leave it at that. How hard is it, has it been on you, lads? Uh, not too hard. Uh, uh, Mum and Dad have been away a little bit, but that's really... Uh, how proud of them are you tonight and for all the work they've done? Uh, I'm very proud that, and they really deserve to get this far and to get this achievement. So, Well said, chaps. We'll find out more about the mischief you've been up to later on. They told me some of it earlier. Now, this is Eric, who's Roisin's sister. Uh, brother, I should say. Uh, and you have two reasons for being here tonight, Eric, um, as well as being Roisin's brother. You also avail of the services from rehab in Tullamore. You go to the centre there. What do you do there? I do that, um, green flag. The water safety? Yeah. So you learn about that. And you play sports as well. What kind of sports do you guys do? I do um, play basketball and quiet and walk my dog. You walk the dog. What's the dog called? Bella. Bella. And how good at the karate are you? Brilliant. <laughs> right, I'm moving away. <laughs> now, you walked the red carpet tonight. Did you enjoy that? Yes. Yeah? But in the future, you'd actually like to be behind the red carpet, behind the rope, doing what? I do um, a photography. You want to do photography and take the pictures. All right, very good. I know there's someone very special at home tonight who's not here, but you want to say hello to her. Who is she? Elaine Rooney, my girlfriend. Elaine, your girlfriend. Say big hi to Elaine. Hello. <laughs> he promised he wouldn't forget you. How pleased for your sister are you? Um, I'm very proud. Yeah. yeah. Very proud. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, and you look—you look the part. Thank you. Thanks, lads. Thank you, guys. Grania.
That's lovely, Aidan. That's lovely. What a gorgeous family you have. Claire, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 People of the Year Award winners, Mark and Roisin Malloy. Thank you.